The technical characteristics of an aircraft undoubtedly play a key role, but only the weapons can determine its real combat value. For the Boeing F-A-18 EF Super Hornet, this defining weapon was the introduction of the new generation AIM-17 4B missile, which provides both range and accuracy. But will it be enough for the fighter to continue to dominate the skies against the backdrop of the F-35 and other more recent aircraft? Let's find out. The events that led the United States to create two revolutionary aircraft of their time, the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon and the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, occurred back in the 1960s. In May of 1964, U.S. Air Force Major John Boyd and mathematician Thomas Christie formed energy maneuverability theory to predict and model the performance of combat aircraft. According to the authors, cumbersome military aircraft were to be replaced by maneuverable aircraft capable of maintaining an ideal balance between speed, lift, and maneuverability. By the end of the 1960s, Boyd had gathered around him a group of engineers and designers better known today as the Fighter Mafia, and who gained fame by actively defending their theories about the need to develop a new generation of light, powerful, highly maneuverable aircraft, the production of which wouldn't cost an arm and a leg from the defense budget. Sound reasonable? Of course it does. The persistent arguments and meticulousness in modeling the Mafia's data turned out to be quite convincing, enough to receive funding from the U.S. Department of Defense in 1969 to develop and study design concepts based on Boyd's Christie's energy maneuverability theory. Over the next few years, the group pushed the idea of lighter, faster, more maneuverable, and the Department of Defense paid for the prototype and testing of five projects under the Lightweight Fighter LWF program. General Dynamics showed off its single-engine YF-16, and Northrop offered its twin-engine YF-17. These two became the main stars of the 1972 LWF program, which had already transformed in 1974 into the larger air combat fighter, ACF, with an eye to the changing requirements of the NATO allies. Pilots rated the highly maneuverable YF-16 above its Northrop opponent, so in January of 1975, it was declared the winner of the ACF, and General Dynamics received a contract from the U.S. Air Force for full-scale development and production. However, the loser of the competition, the YF-17, drew close attention from the U.S. Navy, which chose it as its fighter, this one being much more suitable for naval operations than the winning F-16. It won the competition, but the Navy was extremely skeptical about a single-engine aircraft with a narrow landing gear, which was very difficult to adapt for aircraft carriers. So by May of 1975, the Navy announced its choice in favor of the YF-17, and asked McDonnell Douglas and Northrop to develop a new aircraft based on the existing design and principles of the YF-17. Two years later, Secretary of the Navy W. Graham Clater announced that the F-18 had been named Hornet, not only in keeping with the U.S. Navy tradition of naming its ships and aircraft after insects, symbolizing fighting spirit and aggressiveness, but also as a tribute to the ships of the same name of the U.S. Navy, which played a significant role in its history during the Revolutionary War, as well as the USS Hornet CV-8 and CV-12 in World War II. The F-18 was heavily redesigned from the original YF-17. For operations on board aircraft carriers, its airframe, landing gear, and tail hook were strengthened, added folding wings and ejection mounts, and also expanded the chassis by adding another wheel to the front strut. To meet Navy range and reserve requirements, the fighter's fuel capacity was increased by 4,460 pounds by enlarging the dorsal spine section and adding a 96-gallon fuel tank to each wing. A snag was added to the wing leading edge and stabilizers to prevent aeroelastic flutter found in the stabilizer of the F-15. The wings and stabilizers were also enlarged, the rear fuselage was expanded by 4 inches, and the engines canted outward at the front and the YF-17 control system that had been originally proposed was replaced by a completely digital fly-by-wire system with quadruple redundancy. Of course, all these changes left their mark on the weight of the aircraft, adding about 10,000 pounds and bringing the total weight of the fighter to 37,000 pounds. The Navy had planned to purchase 780 of these devices in three versions, the single-seat F-18A fighter, 
the A-18A attack aircraft, and the two-seat TF-18A, which retained the full combat capability of the F-18 with a reduced fuel load. After improving avionics and multifunction displays, as well as redesigning external hardpoints, engineers were able to combine the A-18A and F-18A into one ultimate aircraft, which, starting in 1980, became known as the F-A-18A. Although the designation itself was officially presented in the spring of 1984, simultaneously renaming the TF-18A and FA-18B. In the 1990s, the U.S. Navy was faced with the need to replace its aging Grumman A-6 Intruder and Ling Temco Vought A-7 Corsair II. However, at that time, such a replacement was not even in development. Therefore, in order to solve this problem, the Navy ordered the development of the FA-18EF Super Hornet. The specialists realized that there was no way to get rid of this with an easy modernization. The service practically needed a new aircraft. Entering service in 1999, the Super Hornet was 20% larger than its predecessor, 7,000 pounds heavier when empty, and 15,000 pounds heavier at maximum weight. Internal fuel reserves had increased by 33%, boosting the fighter's flight range by 41% and its endurance by 50% compared to the legacy model. Because the new Hornet was much heavier than the original, the ejection and braking systems had to be installed differently to ensure safe flights and avoid the risk of confusing the Super Hornet and simply the Hornet over radio communications, the newly made aircraft was called Rhino, including because of its AN-APX-111 antenna. The forward portion of the fuselage remained unchanged, but the fuselage itself was lengthened by 34 inches freeing up space for fuel and future avionics upgrades, while simultaneously increasing the wing area by 25% and adding dog tooth extension and a strip of porous surface at the folding joint to mitigate wing drop. The new version had 42% fewer structural parts than its ancestor. The General Electric F414 engine found in the Super Hornet was derived from the original F404, gaining a boost of 35% extra thrust over most of the flight envelope and 22,000 pound-feet in afterburner. Thanks to fuel smartness, the Super Hornet can return to the carrier with a larger load of unspent fuel and ammunition than conventional Hornets. This ability is known as Bring Back, for which the Super Hornet is in excess of 9,000 pounds. Another important feature of the Super Hornet was its survivability. Unlike more modern counterparts like the legendary F-22 Raptor or Lockheed Martin's latest F-35 Lightning II, it relies not on stealth but on an improved radar signature, more advanced electronic warfare capabilities, reduced ballistic vulnerability, and broader use of long-range weapons to collectively improve the safety of both the fighter itself and its crew. The Super Hornet also succeeded in the area of avionics. The fact is that the rugged airframe of the aircraft was built using open mission systems architecture, making it easy to integrate with virtually any new weapon systems and other technologies as they become available. The engineers applied a similar block principle as in the case of the same F-35. With these block upgrades, the F-A-18EF Super Hornet has once again proven its adaptability and ability to keep pace with adversaries even in today's dynamic combat environment. Block 2 variants beginning in 2005 were equipped with the AN-APG-79 Acer radar, capable of simultaneous air-to-air -air and air-to-ground attacks, providing high-quality, high-resolution terrain mapping over long distances. The radar, in turn, made it possible to detect not only smaller targets, including air targets beyond the range of the fighter's own air-to-air -air missiles, but also approaching enemy missiles. In 2007-2008, these upgrades added the Joint Helmet Mounted Queuing System JHMCS, providing multi-role situational awareness to the pilot, including high off boresight missile queuing, and the Shared Reconnaissance Pod SHARP. A high-resolution digital tactical airborne reconnaissance system featuring enhanced day-night and all-weather capabilities. Besides, the multifunctional information distribution system low-volume communication terminal was upgraded with the MIDS JTRS system. This made it possible to increase throughput literally 10 times and also ensure compatibility with joint tactical radio system standards. Block 3 avionics delivered to the U.S. Navy in 2021 included an improved cabin where all multifunction displays have been replaced by a large 10 by 19 inch touchscreen. 
updated integration and targeting networks, improved processor, and even more advanced open mission systems architecture. Among the additional features, there were also plans to replace the main electro-optical sensor and advanced targeting forward-looking infrared laser designator with ANAAQ-28V, lightning targeting pod, and the installation of ANASG-34V IRST-21 in a modified centerline FPU-13 external fuel tank for the purpose of passive infrared detection and guidance. But whatever one may say, the basis of most old-school fighters, the fangs, are their weapons. For close combat, the Super Hornet's equipped with a 6-barrel 20mm M61A2 Vulcan cannon, firing up to 6,000 rounds per minute and ideal for maneuverable air combat or destroying lightly armored targets on the ground. However, let's be honest, the Hornet's nickname, Super, was definitely not because of its Vulcan cannon but because of its ability to carry a huge amount of guided weapons on 11 hardpoints with a total payload capacity of up to 17,750 pounds. The FA-18EF arsenal is difficult to describe in any other way except for all occasions. After all, there are missiles here for literally any mission set. For example, the AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles are ideal for close combat due to infrared guidance, and the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, AMRAM, will allow you to get rid of targets beyond visual range. For more traditional missions, you can use the AIM-7 Sparrow, which has proven itself in highly congested RF environments. If we're talking about the destruction of ground and sea targets, then here the FA-18EF is hidden AGM-65EF Maverick Air-to-Ground Missiles, which are a formidable enemy of armored targets. AGM-84 Harpoon, designed for combat with enemy ships, as well as the AGM-88 High-Speed Anti-Radiation Missile, HARM, designed to eliminate enemy radar and suppression of air defense, which today is one of the key areas for both the Navy and the U.S. Air Force. In addition to the above-mentioned armament, the fighter can drop AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon, JSAL, Gliding Bombs, AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, JASM, Stealth Cruise Missiles and Joint Direct Attack Munitions JDAM bombs on the heads of the enemies of democracy. Some options include the GBU-32, 35, 38, and 54, Paveway Series Laser Guided Bombs, Unguided MK-80 Bombs, MK-20 Rock I-2 Cluster Bombs, and Fast Action MK-62, 63, and 65 Naval Mines. Furthermore, the U.S. Navy will soon integrate the Joint Strike Missile JSM, originally developed for placement in the internal compartments of the F-35 Lightning II Stealth Fighter and the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile JATAM, into its Super Hornets. The Beyond Visual Range Air-to-Air -air Missile BV RAM is being prepared as a supplement replacement for the good old AIM-120 AMRAM. It would seem that the arsenal of this Terminator with wings would be enough for any task, but no. Every cake needs its own cherry. For the Super Hornet, it was the AIM-174B, first seen in a photo under the wing of an FA-18EF back in 2018. Introduction of the AIM-174B into the U.S. Navy inventory points to a four-tier air-to-air missile portfolio that appears tailored to help pierce the Beijing anti-access overlay that extends far from its shores. Simply put, this gives the Navy another option to ease the likely encirclement of Taiwan and provide a level of air protection for naval assets against long-range attacks. As a derivative of the SM-6, the AIM-174B integrated with early warning systems like Aegis and E-2D Advanced Hawkeye aircraft will be one of the most effective weapons against enemy ballistic and hypersonic missiles, allowing it to engage difficult maneuvering targets that have become a real headache even for the most modern missile defense systems. A Super Hornet equipped with such missiles will be able to quickly deliver to areas of potential threat and thereby ensure reliable protection of strategically important facilities of the United States and its allies. Do you think the AIM-174 will be a key factor in keeping the FA-18EF Super Hornet in service for the Navy for decades to come? Share your guesses in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.